So here is why you should always put your shopping cart away. So imagine this, you just finished grocery shopping, you walk back to your car, you put all your groceries away, and now your shopping cart is sitting there. What do you do? Do you bring it back to the designated shopping cart area, or do you leave it where it is, get in your car, and drive away? Now how would your answer change if it were raining? Or if there were, your car was on the opposite side of the parking lot and you had to walk a long distance to the designated area? Or if there were other people watching? Now keep that in mind, and we'll come back to that later. Shopping cart theory was invented on Twitter about a year ago when a user posted something about how a shopping cart can be a key into human character. They said that the shopping cart is the ultimate litmus test for whether a person is capable of self-governing. But how can the shopping cart determine if someone can govern themselves? You see, people know that putting your shopping cart away is the right thing to do. Our parents taught us that and the signs say that, but at the same time, there are no consequences for not putting your shopping cart away. A police officer won't show up at your door and say, you're arrested if you don't put your shopping cart away. So that's how we can tell in a lawless society, would you make the right decision? This is you with your shopping cart. You have the opportunity to put the responsibility on yourself, or you could shift the responsibility to someone else, someone who already has a ton of shopping carts that they have to put away. And even though you could say that it's their job, do you want to put that responsibility on someone else when it's so easy to take a few extra steps to put yours, yours away yourself? It comes down to the question of moral consequences. Moral consequences are the outcomes that come of all of our decisions. Every single decision that we make has a chain of outcomes. And I like to think of it like a chain of dominoes. This is you, first domino, with your shopping cart making your decision. Every time you make a decision, especially moral decisions, you hit down the first domino. Someone who doesn't put their shopping cart away looks at the chain of dominoes from about here, right at the beginning. They see if they push the domino, someone else will get it, someone else will clean it up, then they get in their car and they drive away without thinking about the long chain of outcomes that happen from their decision. In the, on the other hand, people who put their shopping carts away are able to see the end of the chain of dominoes. They're able to see all the possible outcomes that could arise from their decision. For example, if I don't put my shopping cart away, then maybe someone else will have to do it and that'll make their day harder and that'll just inconvenience them when they don't need to be inconvenienced. Or if I don't put my shopping cart away, then maybe it'll rain and the wheels will get all rusty and the next person who uses it will have one of those wonky wheels that never turns right in the store. Or maybe if I don't put my shopping cart away, then a gust of wind will come and the shopping cart will roll and it will hit a Ferrari, someone's brand new Ferrari. And I don't even know anyone with a Ferrari, but it's hypothetical. It's hypothetical because that's what we're thinking. When we think about all the outcomes that could happen, we consider the dangers of not making the right decision. And this doesn't just apply to all things in shopping carts. It applies to other aspects of morality in our everyday lives, like donating to the homeless. You know it's the right thing to do, but you could easily just go buy a latte instead. Or holding the door for someone. You could just pretend that you don't see them, and instead of watch them do that awkward little walk-run thing as they try to catch up to the door before you close it. Or cheating on a test. You know it's not the right thing to do, but it's so much easier. Or what about when someone drops their wallet and you see it, but you don't want to be the one to pick it up. You think someone else could pick it up. You think, oh, well, maybe if I pick it up and bring it up to them, then they'll think that I'm the one who stole it. You see, there are so many factors that we consider every time we make a decision. There's so many factors that get in the way of us making the right decision. We call this moral flexibility. Moral flexibility is the context that strongly influences which moral beliefs are brought to bear in a given situation. Not every situation is based, is not a black or white situation. It's a yes or no, it's not a yes or no answer, but it's more complex. So the shopping cart scenario doesn't exactly look like this, but it looks a little more like this. It's very complex, it's like a web. Every decision we make has so many factors that we first must consider before we make the final decision. Like what time is it? What's the weather? How many people are watching? And where am I before we can even decide if we want to bring our shopping cart back? And because of this, it becomes hard. It's, there's so many opportunities for us to make the wrong decision. It's hard for us to make the right decision and easy for us to just forget about it, ignore it, pretend like someone else will figure it out and not worry about the outcome. But why does this matter? Why does it matter that I'm talking about a shopping cart in a parking lot and your decision about putting it back or not? You see, the shopping cart is a key to something a little bit deeper. Philippa Foote, a 20th century philosopher, stated that the man who rejects morality because he sees no reason to obey its rules can be convicted of villainy, but not of inconsistency. Well, what does this mean? 
To say that someone who is immoral, someone who rejects morality, is consistent, it sounds almost like a compliment, saying that he is consistent for rejecting morality. But no, because if you reject morality in something as simple and as stupid as putting your shopping cart away, then how can you not reject morality on a larger scale? If you can't do something as simple as walk from one parking spot to another, something that you know is right, then how can you choose morality on a broader scale? You can't. You see, every choice we make determines our character. And inversely, our character determines our choices. So every choice, bad or good, will impact our character in the future. And once that character is impacted, our choices in the future after that are impacted again. So if you don't put your shopping cart away, that will negatively reflect on your character, which will negatively impact your choices in the future. And if you do put your shopping cart away, something so simple that will impact your character for the better, making it easier to make harder and difficult moral choices in the future. You see, moral choices are hard to make. It's not an easy choice to do the, the right thing. It's not always the easiest choice. But that's what we have to do. We have to look to the end of the chain of dominoes before we make our decision. We have to consider all of the opportunities for us to make the wrong decision and still choose the right decision. So ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to always put your shopping cart away and choose the harder right over the easier wrong.